special report. Armed with the Rover Pup, one cat is on the loose and addicted to crack. Cat crack. Cat crack. One cat is loose and addicted on crack. Cat crack. <laughs> cat crack. <laughs> cat crack. He's freebasing your crack. You can see him smoking crack up on a daily grind. You know, yes. it's Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome to Great Night, people. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, man. <laughs> you know how it goes. Tuesdays, am I right? Tuesdays. You ever get that Tuesday feeling, Bri? Uh, yeah, sometimes it feels like last Wednesday. But, yeah, uh, sometimes. But not always. I'm definitely here in Austin. I'm not in New Hampshire. Certainly uh, with the with the with the first in the nation primary. I'm not there. I'm no, here. Uh, uh, that tracks, and, yeah. and I'm certainly here in Austin, Texas, with yep. you in the same room at the same time. Uh, thank you, by the way, for my birthday gift. I got buttons I get to press that change things to things. Yeah, no, you now have a new larger stream deck uh, that you can uh, play around with because I definitely remembered your birthday. But I also know that uh, we are joined by the one and only Mr. Jordan Breeding. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. I'm also here, definitely here. You're in here. Austin. You're here on a, on Tuesday. Yeah, on Tuesday. Whatever the day. That <laughs> not on a is. green screen. You're not. No, you're not watching every movie of a franchise. <laughs> you're just a regular guy here on a Tuesday, chatting it up on the Great Night uh, Show. That, that, watching that Cat is, Crack. That is a bit that once we started recording, I, I wanted to bring up is I wanted to have us walk forward and awkwardly not really handshake each other. So and, and kind of like dare people to figure out whether or not <laughs> we were being green. So we green. actually, uh, I was talking to Dave, which is uh, our, our camera guy, and uh, we were saying what we should do is... Because we're going to film, I don't, is this good for great night? I don't know. Because we're going to film episodes of The Modern Rogue tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what we should do is be like, okay, the gig's up. I'm green screened, but I'm getting really good at Keen. And like, <laughs> See like you sit on your lap it. or something. And then we'll cut to Dave wearing like a full blue morph yeah. suit. Later, like I'll just film that later and be like, yeah, or wow. either that, or I could wear like a a, a, a whole bodysuit covered in ping pong balls. Yeah, and exactly. I'm like, right. I guess it's working, boys. Yeah, it looks great. You guys should do like a secret handshake, right? <laughs> like, like two taps up down. Like, yeah, be like, I'm getting so good at yeah. peeing. Actually, uh, Brian is entirely CG. Exactly. Brian has been dead for over ten years now. Oh, yeah, but AI is amazing. I, exactly. Anyway, I only wish. Uh, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> two, two things. Number one, uh, Jordan Breeding, uh, I believe, holds the world record for most articles written on the Modern Rogue, and and that's why we talk about his articles on the Modern Rogue uh, YouTube channel, which uh, continues to grow and develop, and we're excited because we're going to have more and more of our friends on it. Uh, but meanwhile. That also means that Jordan Breeding gets to come out here and be in person to experience a little bit more of Great Night. And we wanted to start the show with something. And so, uh, 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 first reactions, Jordan, cat crack. It feels, it feels like, uh, did you guys ever, uh, frequent flashplayer.com? Hell yeah. It felt like so. Uh, I watched a lot of Knox videos. Do you remember this guy? No. He would do claymation videos of like these little blue guys, and um, they would do things where he's like, one guy made pancake landmines, and he's like, "I'm just gonna see who comes." And people would walk up and be like, "When I eat pancakes, I like to put my face right in," it, and they'd yeah. explode. And uh, he'd also dub the Matrix with goofy stuff, and it felt very much of that, era. like this pre YouTube. Yeah. Like proto I think, yeah, that was, e bombs world. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, there was there was a flash video that 
I thought was probably the funniest thing that ever happened <laughs> in college called barnyard shenanigans uh, that me and my roommate just hysterical yeah. like like just like full body aches because we were laughing so hard at this shit flash video right. of animals fucking and exploding like that's <laughs> pretty much uh, uh where my my pre fully developed brain yeah. was just set well, to the moon and also a lot of these videos at this time like they always came with songs like did you ever see the video that like space people because they don't come from earth <laughs> you ever see this one it's like this guy's head floating around it's like the exact same premise of really weird uh actually i have it i have it right here let me hit play you already have that yeah oh uh, no yeah we're gonna we're <laughs> I love you, Kenton, <laughs> but your mind is so fragile. You need a dripped out Arkansas boy to find your reality, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's it. That's what I, I used to watch as a child. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, give me a direction. I'll find it. Uh, what is it? I think if you just type in space people. Space people. Are we coming up on the need for a museum for some of these videos? Because they're, uh, they're being lost to the internet. I think and so. And not all of them are on YouTube, and they're certainly not as searchable. But I kind of feel like I would go to a flash video yeah. museum. Early somewhere. days of uh, – uh, there's a friend of ours who um, has proposed the idea of kind of a, believe it or not, Ripley-style museum of like – Here's the skateboard that the dog was rolling on in this <laughs> oh, thing. Yeah. Like I, I would be there for that. I would donate uh, the I, toilet I, where the guy was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I also have a question. It feels like when I is this just a product of time, or does like 480p on YouTube look worse now than it did, or is that just my my mind? I think, no, I think it's it, it's because it's the just, standard has gone up, and so now the stuff just looks trash it just it's looks so terrible yeah it, it yep <laughs> I mean, you tell me which of these looks better <laughs> well but like what what's more <laughs> fucked up that that looks terrible or that this is going to look terrible in five years well that's what i'm wondering i i i just it's hard for me to reconcile it's like it makes me wonder if like the the simulation uh, theory is real <laughs> well i was gonna say like compression <laughs> has changed and it's made it worse somehow but maybe not maybe i'm just i just this is progress i guess this is so. how we know that we continue to march forward and uh, uh that space people no improve. longer looks as crisp that's, yeah exactly because when you first saw space people you're like wow how are we even gonna know what old is this looks so modern <laughs> this will be modern forever so uh, uh, normally when a guest comes on we do the plugs at the end but i feel like more people should know about dr jordan breeding's work um i'm gonna type in dr jordan breeding uh I mean, how are you get? Yeah, you guys just want to sit here Born for like of, three hours and watch. Um, <laughs> we, watch. Yeah, do you, do you want him to talk about it or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want visuals. I just want to make sure I have okay. the right one before Brian, I open Brian, it. Sorry. Brian's brain derailed him asking you a okay. question by uh, uh, saying that he needs to find visuals. So, uh, uh, how long has it been since you went indie? Uh, I went indie, as it were, in February. So we're coming up like right on a full year. I think. Damn. I think total failure, huh? I think yesterday, <laughs> real, 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 real fucking mistake. Either yesterday or tomorrow was when I was. They were like, "You, you think you think you'd be happier as a contractor?" <laughs> 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 it was right around this time. Uh, uh, oh, so we're, so we're coming up on on everything going down because I know that it was pretty sudden, right? It was. It, so you know, I don't want to get. In trouble with anything. What I will what, say, what, what it, are you going to get fired? <laughs> you can't. Ha -ha! They can't do true. that that's, anymore. They can't do that. I, basically, it was it was uh, it was not unexpected because I I they were not wrong that I was I was not gelling with the new leadership. Yeah, they just kind of they changed a lot of things. And they wanted to change a lot of the direction. And yeah. 
I was way too close to it because I was the guy that rebooted it yes. from my house by myself. Yeah, uh, that's the thing you get to do when you're the one who comes up and just decides to save a dead property. You, you get to, uh, you know, be the guy that does whatever he wants afterwards. Well, but then all the people that were involved in that decision moved on or were fired or whatever, and so um, nobody that was there had anything to do with bringing me on and yeah. they had different ideas for where they wanted it to go. And and so it wasn't out of left field in that respect. It was more out of left field in the like, right. I'm now. having a kid in three weeks and uh, not yeah. the best time in the world, but yeah. I, I also, you know, whatever, nobody cares about that. Uh, except we, everybody, we, except for all of us. Your work. But, except but, but, literally, <laughs> we, I, I, except yeah. the people I, I, I who ask you the question because your, we care very much yeah, about it. Also, yeah, I will respect your desperate plea to move off this topic. Well, uh, uh, we we can focus on you doing stuff, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, indie, because that's that's a that's a really really crazy journey when you jump, you know, you fall backwards, you trust fall into your audience and right. uh, experience the like, well, okay, they caught me, nice. How high are they going to yeah. uh, uh, carry me? Well, you know, I, I have really, I think literally my entire career only fallen ass backwards into things. I have not. Uh, You've never done anything on purpose? Well, I. <laughs> You've not charged it I've to the done, boss's office? I, <laughs> breeding, sir. Jordan breeding. Yeah. <laughs> I got what you need. Yeah. Here's my resume. <laughs> just says videos. Um <laughs> Uh, no, I just, I never have a great plan for anything. So like the crack stuff basically happened on accident. I'm very thankful for it. And I got to do a lot of cool stuff. This was not, not as much accident per se, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I have been really pleased with it. It's been great. Brian's obviously been a huge help. He was a huge help in getting me to quit my other job and go to cracked. And now, uh, I'm really good at telling people like, Quit your day job. Yeah. yeah Brian yeah. Loves I got shit. one yeah, line. He does. He loves that shit. And he's he's helped me uh stay alive. He's helping me make videos. And I'm I've cut, I think I checked just for Modern Rogue alone. I think I've done about 750 shorts at this point. Uh and no bullshit. Those shorts, both on Scam Nation and well, uh, Scam Nation was uh I don't want to say dead, but I think astronomers call it uh the heat death of the universe. Like there was no energy there. Okay. And then you started chopping them up and then all of a sudden they spiked like tenfold on there. And so now there's an entire generation over the last year and a half of people who have never known the original scam nation. They only know uh, uh, the, the, the one minute chunks that, that you've chopped them into. Yeah. Yeah. It's been cool. It's actually, it's honestly been a lot of fun because I, 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 I've said this to you, but I will like run down every day and like grab a deck of cards and like do tricks on my kids. Yeah. Just because I'm learning as I'm editing. Just because they're so dumb, right? Well, yeah, because they're idiots. These kids are morons. Yeah. Yeah. I've just done the same trick 500, <laughs> 500 days in a row. It's called the key card. Yeah. I just, I key card them. <laughs> no, they don't even fully grasp it. They're like, yeah, you found my card. I'm like, well, whatever. But like it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Where did how did I find it? They're like, I don't who cares? Who gives a shit? Yeah. Um, so it's 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 been great. Um, you know, we've we've made videos that we like. The video that uh you keep cutting to is probably my favorite, at least in the conceptually. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time to cut to it. We uh this is like a three hour video where I did all the Friday the thirteenth, but the joke is that we we just ran around the woods and the cameraman's trying to kill me. Um, and we also made it grainy to look like a shitty, like late seventies, early eighties movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I did like the fact that you, <laughs> does it executive produced by just keep going the entire time long? No. So that's what people keep, uh, they keep thinking that it's like a bit and it sort of is, but those are all patrons. <laughs> people are like Ronald Coleman. Where do you come up with these names? I'm like, I don't know. It's just like a dude's name who like we we <laughs> we uh, uh, recorded the bonus podcast uh, for those behind the paywall at patreoncom slash night. and uh, you know. uh, we talked about uh, the fact that I saw the Beekeeper, and Ooh. I kid you not, I believe there were 
17 vanity tags before they got to the movie. And then we got to see all those names again as executive produced by producer of the executive producer, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And I, I actually, I was wondering like, what is the world record for the most vanity tags at the beginning of any movie? They're getting weird too. Cause you'll watch a movie and it'll be like something like that you're excited to go see or some kind of like IP that you are familiar with in the past. And it'll be like Warner brothers, the feng shui wholesale ice company. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, like it's just like random shit shows up now where we're like, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, it's just harder to make a movie. It's harder to get money for a movie, but like there's some random people that kick in enough that they get a vanity card. I feel like it's almost like every, like every director has their own, like little company yeah, that gets like tied Scott in, Brady and then it's like, yeah, Bad Robot, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or it's like you know, J Jason Statham has B Pictures or whatever, and they just have to like, <laughs> he's like, well, if he's in it, that means B Pictures helped or whatever. Bporn.org. <laughs> yeah, B yeah, no, no. Jason Statham's production companies. <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure you know who you're talking about. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, but I. I mean, our I think our I have my own production company. <laughs> Our our executive producer tags. It is essentially a joke because uh, they. I think in the last one they they are still happening like twelve minutes into the video, just uh, by sheer number. And because I want, we leave I want them, them to go the entire. That's time like long. that's my that's, that's my goal. When if we have patrons for like a four hour video that are paying uh, at whatever that tier is, then oh dude. Like uh, I can retire. Uh, I just got a. Uh, we have a thing for the politics podcast, the Donor Club, that is yeah. fifty bucks a week, right? So it it is, but you get your name shouted out, yeah. in like a beginning thing, sure. And uh, my wife is like, like I'm like, oh, I got another uh, Donor Club person today, and she's yeah. like, oh, that's great. How many of those do you have? And I'm like, all. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how, how many Saudi Arabian sheiks are there? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I'll, I'll take as many as they want. I'll make yeah. that opening tag. 30 fucking minutes. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Like you can look, God made the 30 second skip button for a reason. Yeah. Like you could you could drag <laughs> you could drag that as far as you need as long as I'm cashing in on on that. These people are are saints. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean it's it's also yeah, it's very fun because uh whenever people are annoyed by it, they're like, "Why did you come up with yeah, 12 minutes worth of names?" I'm like, "No, these are just people that really care about it." And then it's fun too. So I put them all in manually every time. So I actually have to build in like a a relatively decent chunk of time to put in the credits. Yeah. Um. And so it, it is helpful for me to like just kind of be surprised name, all the time. Name. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like you see you have however many patrons you have, but when you're kind of going through and typing in, you know, a, a satanic pickle <laughs> every time you make a video. Yeah. It it kind of gets in, there, and then uh, also uh, there, uh, there yeah. was definitely you're my satanic pickle. <laughs> <laughs> there, there there was definitely when we were putting together the Founders Day. Uh, giant you know five thousand dollar bronze plaque uh like uh with genuine concern david rowan was like uh i think some people are trying to mess with us um there's somebody whose name is at the at symbol spelled at at and then there's an underscore and then the word underscore so it's at at underscore underscore <laughs> And it's like, well, alphabetically that goes at the beginning, but I think they're just messing with us. I was like, did they give us money? <laughs> yeah. like, it was like, yeah, I was like, well, also um, um, uh, at the end, there's Alex something and it it's eight equals A equals L equals E equal, uh, equals, and he goes through the whole thing, equals, equals, uh, yes, yes, equals, equals D. Did he give us money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He goes on the plaque. <laughs> yeah, Let's for go. sure. Let's go. Uh, and I do think that, yeah, the fun thing about having them all isolated, too, is um, inevitably you will get these moments where their name pops up. At for example, with Alex Jones. <laughs> so they hit screenshot. <laughs> yeah. It looks like that they're uh, sponsoring Alex Jones. Or <laughs> one guy is uh, a deaf or one, one patron is... Definitely not Skynet. And then, of course, we did Terminator. Yeah. And it's like Arnold's there. It's like, definitely not Skynet. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it's a fun thing, I think. I so it. you have have you learned to trust that the Patreon's going to be there? Or are you still in the process? Because this is something that's happened with a few of our friends that have gone fully independent. Yeah. 
Uh, it, I, it, yeah, it as a matter of fact, Justin, I, I, I don't want to call out the specific person, but I got a phone call and, and um, uh, this person who will remain. We're not going to say the name. No, uh, no, no, no. He said, uh, Brian, I'm beginning to suspect <laughs> that once somebody becomes a patron, they tend to stick around for a very long time. Some of them continue to pay you money even after not watching your content anymore. Yeah. Anyway, I, it's me, Ali Spagnola. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. No, he uh, uh, was like very panicked because, like, every once in a while, I don't know how you bill yours, but uh, we, because we do weekly shows. Yeah. I've always been on the side of like, just do a weekly, a weekly charge thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, because you just wind up making more money and. Uh, I also think it's just better for weekly content that like, hey, if I don't do a show that week, I don't get paid. Correct. Like, like it's it's not like, you know, there's there's some like monthly ones where it's like, hey, look, that, that money comes in no matter what. Yeah. I got to sing for my supper every single week. Uh, but some weeks have five of the day that you charge. And so you make more. Uh, and our friend would just be crestfallen because the next month, it would be a like four Wednesday month, mm. and he'd be like, "I don't know what I did, <laughs> but I've dropped thousands of dollars." I yeah, thought, yeah. For I thought last, last last month it was a lot, and now it is less than that, and I am shook. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, I thought that combining Lizzo with Frank Sinatra would be a hit, and apparently it was not. <laughs> Please this call me back. This is such a deep thing. <laughs> this is such a deep cut. Those, those who know, know. That's why. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I think I have it set to monthly because my videos take about a month, usually. And yeah, so, I mean, if you put out one video a month, then it's the same either way because it's basically a, a per creation yeah. situation. Uh, and honestly, we kind of mostly, it all, I don't really understand how much we have because we mostly are throwing it all right back into it. Yeah. I've been just progressively trying to give editors and Dave, our camera guy and stuff, raises and like making sure that the content can get better. So it's not, it's sort of like if we would have a lean month, which we haven't necessarily had, it's pretty much just gone slightly up i think for, for monthly things are a lot more stable yeah yeah um uh and then i've just tried to to pay a little bit more and then brian keeps my family alive mostly he's just my main client at this point but i, I, I i'll also <laughs> the do feeling is mutual thank you <laughs> yeah you're welcome and to the twenty thousand new subscribers this month uh the um uh the, there's also something really wild that is at the fringes of what I've ever conceived of as possible. Like when we came out with world's greatest con, we did something that I would never have recommended, which is have a Patreon promise. Nothing once a month post. Thank you. We're working on it. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I was like, well, we'll find out. And it turns out that, uh, it's enough to fund, uh, us getting onto airplanes, flying around the country, doing first person investigations and shit. I mean, that, yeah. th that blew me away. Well, you know, I've done some, uh, I've, I've been talking with other people, like other creators that are kind of at, at my level or a little earlier and, um, talking about Patreon and stuff. And they're like, how do we do it? And I think to your point, like the way that I always describe it to people is like, look, uh, Apple TV plus is like, what, like seven, $8 a month. Now, yeah. You are not competing with that on a content level. No. So if you are saying like, oh, you get like a whole separate podcast behind the paywall for your, for your five, 10, 15, 20, 50 dollars a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you can't really win on that kind of a level. You're not competing with Netflix. You're not competing mm -hmm. with these things. So really what you are more offering people in theory is uh, hopefully you make a thing that's good enough that people just want it to exist. Yes. Um, and, you know, the pitch is kind of, this can only really exist because of you, because otherwise, you know, we are dependent on crazy algorithms or all these other things that could come and go, yeah. platforms that could die tomorrow. And then, yeah, like a level of access potentially, like maybe that's behind the scenes, maybe that's a Discord so you get into another community or whatever. But it, it doesn't, the more that you're trying to pitch the value, I think the less... 
appealing it is. That That's the difference <clears throat> between uh, the transactional versus the relational. Right. Where it's like, um, we don't love indie bands that we discovered. Like, uh, when I discovered Tenacious D in 1999, I didn't love it because they're incredible fidelity or because I was cool for playing it. Uh, I was not. I was actively less cool. I was assured by every woman I met that <laughs> yes. indeed I was not. Exactly. Yeah. However, uh, it, uh, I, I did love the uniqueness of their voice, the intimacy and the directness of their content, and I was rooting for them, and I felt no guilt whatsoever supporting them. And now that they're super uh, wealthy and, and doing great, uh, I'm happy. Uh, I'm great. I knew them when is, yeah. is, is the game that you play. And you know you'll see some of these creators like um, uh, Pro ZD or whatever the the um, guy that's now voicing all these anime things and all the stuff. Um, they they have sort of reduced their Patreon to kind of one tier where they're like, I'm literally never going to give you anything. Yes, we're fine now. But also, you know, you want to keep the dream alive. That's fine yeah. too. And I, you know, so I think it's it's uh, it's a constant negotiation, I suppose. But the more that you're pushing, yeah, you'll get a sweet well, and, behind and, the paywall and, and, content. But, but yeah, on, I think on top of that, there's different types of deliverables, right? Right. It's it's like, uh, I, I, to be honest, if I was, uh, I don't I don't want to scare anyone away from the main great night show, but most of my favorite, most sincere moments are in the bonus podcasts. Are in sure. the we're not trying to put on a show; we're just speaking authentically. Uh, uh, and, As opposed and, to this, which is a lot of razzle dazzle. We we yeah. rehearsed. This, this is actually one hundred percent scripted. Yeah, yeah, this is all scripted. Yeah. That's a five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, there's a, there's a teleprompter there. There's a teleprompter there. <laughs> yeah. It's uh yeah, it's amazing how much time is poured into the script of these. No, I yeah, I mean that's not to say that there isn't value to be had or really cool things to find within these patreons or behind the paywalls, but. It's it's not a one to one of like the more dollars that you get, like you get a a better deal than you would again Apple TV. Plus. Well, yeah, yeah, I I, I I I there's an element of we're making a thing happen that I think matters to people, and there's an element of that's the price that I need to live, and and that's mm. what I I do think is changing. If you look at like back in the day when YouTubers would put their PayPal in a description and then get flamed for e-begging and, yeah. then, and then we've come to where we are now. And the reason why Patreon for things that they do that annoy me, uh, I will always be grateful for them because they became the household name that you could trust your credit card to sure. for this kind of relationship. Yeah. And that's invaluable like like the fact that they and somebody was eventually going to do it many people will do it past them but they were in the mind's eye the first people to say if you love something you can support it at this website yeah we're not a scam we're not going to go away we don't look like russian spyware uh, uh make this relationship with the creators that matter and when that becomes a thing and people make a living off it then it's it's self fulfilling, you know. I, I can I can say to people honestly on all the Patreons that we do, this funds my lifestyle. I, I wake up every single day and I think about making content for the people that are paying for us to make content. Everybody can listen to it. We always want to have a wide a wide net. There is the little bit of that little exclusivity element, and I do think it can be ninety nine percent of what you do is publicly available. Sure. If people are really into it that 1% is going to matter. Like, they're going to uh, really uh, be into uh, it. Uh, along those lines, on I think on Cord Killers uh, w was the first place we started playing that game, but uh, uh, calling patrons our bosses. Uh, we, we do it in a playful manner, but we 100% mean it. It's like, yeah. you jump the line. Like, if you say patron number 475, I'm like, you have my full attention. What can I do for you? How can right. I make this product better? Give me meaningful input. And even if I disagree with the input, uh, I'm still going to, I'll do as much as I am able to do to keep patron 475 a uh, happy boss. Well, and I think too, I think to your point about Patreon, I think sort of the whole ecosystem of the internet has changed. I mean, today, Pitchfork fired 
half of their staff and they're rapping pitchfork wait, 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 what is pitchfork pitchfork is the music a very influential music website they're the anyway they they could make or break indie bands back in the day um probably less so now but they're they're it's it's one of the most i i would argue prestigious kind of music it, it was it was sites. the music answer to as magazines died and Rolling Stone kind of declined in its cultural relevance and the blog revolution was happening. Pitchfork was the answer to that. And very much yeah. for an entire generation usurped does this like the, bands would get mad or thrilled because of Pitchfork reviews. Yeah. And now, like everything in the adpocalypse is. It's being rolled up, declining, and being sold and resold, yeah. and it's yeah. uh, it's being combined with GQ somehow, uh, which doesn't necessarily immediately conjure up. Which is so funny because that was like like, like Pitchfork was like the the opposite the anti- of that <laughs> idea, right? right. And so my my only point though is that you know it's like if you want to get things that aren't like uh, there's a degree to which you would probably prefer. Uh, to listen to a publication or to read a publication where you're more of the boss than, uh, in, in this instance, Condé Nast, who is, might just gut everything tomorrow. And you sort of want, like, I think of sites like Defector, which are not Patreon-based, but are still subscription-based yeah. and employee-owned. And kind of, you know, if you want anything to be good, you sort of need to get it out of the hands of a lot of these companies. And Patreon well, is a way to do that. I think, yeah, mm. it, it, especially in that world you know they the money that funded all those you know the blog revolution came comes along in the 2000s and it is an answer to magazines and newspapers sure uh but it relied on this idea that online advertising was going to have the lifespan of display and print advertising of you know the 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s so we're like cool oh my god this is a new 60 year epic of because now it's digital so we can figure out new ways to do it yeah. this thing's gonna last forever right. eight years later like oh turns out web ads are really not good uh uh and uh we we made the big mistake the one mistake you can never make in advertising proving whether or not it works <laughs> uh uh that was the big selling point was trackability shit well, yeah. we really fucked that one up, and now people want to spend less money on it. The only thing that matters was Google ads and Facebook ads, and they took an outsized role in everything. So all of a sudden, blogs, you know, are, are out of favor about, you know, 12 years into their ascendancy after people pour a lot of money into it. Yeah. And an entire generation of writers kind of came and went, it, you know, when, when the pandemic happened, you know, I went to a journalism school, so I know a bunch of people that are journalists, and like... A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people are losing their jobs now. And I realized that being this weird black sheep that like went beyond the wall so I could commune with the wildlings of yeah. like independent media. Now, all of a sudden, they're all like, it's that Patreon thing, huh? Yeah. Like, that's how do you uh, how much do you right. make on that? You know, yeah. that's that's a, a kind of a kind of an interesting uh, thing, because the, the promise of infinite money flowing from advertising is just like it's not even dying. It's dead. It's right. over. It's over in print. It's over in digital. And, and it's even over in video. And video was the last big hope of, of the place where you could still get those CPMs. Uh, and then that's even not reliable. Well, uh, uh, along, along that line, there are kind of uh, – for the people that I support on Patreon, part of it is access or getting something early, et cetera, et cetera. But, but ultimately – it's about uh, reaching another human being. And one of the biggest things, you know, I've got uh, two daughters who are actively trying to make it in the arts, uh, one in writing, one in uh, music and drawing, um, uh, both of them in drawing. Uh, and they're both like firmly aligned in team, not AI. And I, I understand why you would be worried about that as an emerging artist, but but meanwhile, over the last, just even over the last two years, we've seen every time a new AI thing happens, it's very novel for a little bit, and then everybody's able to sniff out low effort content. And the, the operating theory, which I might have mentioned on this program before, is basically, as best I can tell, nobody is made happier 
when they figure out at the other side of the connection is not a human. Now, uh, there, uh, yes, we would like to see uh, digital makeup. Yes, we'd like to see de-aging. Yes, we'd like to see special effects. Yes, we'd like to see exceptional uh, cinematography, uh, directing, uh, high-quality 4K, all of those things. However, at the end of that journey, on the other side of that portal, there better be a goddamned human because I want to support a human and hear what a human has to say. Um, uh, so, weirdly, as afraid as my my children and most of the world is of AI right now, I, I am of the opinion that uh, uh, figure out what cannot be faked, uh, or I don't know, like let's say moving the moon in front of the sun, and uh, that's where the action is, <laughs> is, is my opinion. So I was actually, so uh, Rick Rubin came out with a book, I think last year, about creativity, and because all of my flights were delayed and or canceled and or bumped today, I read 300 pages of it today, this morning. Jesus. I just well, you know, whenever these guys write these, like I, I read, uh, <laughs> the guy calls himself a reducer, not a producer. <laughs> Three hundred pages, am I right? Sorry. Uh, well, I was gonna say, uh, I read uh, all of the War of Art because you recommended it. And, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but each uh, page uh, is like Stephen Press Pressfield Pressfield. Yeah, yeah. Each yeah. page is like, just write, you dumb bitch. And then that's the whole page, and you Fucking turn it. Love it. So anyway, it's it. a little bit of that. No. Oh no, it's great. It's the it's, best. That's it's exactly good, but I just I mean. 300 pages looks very different than Stephen King's 300 pages. Um, but what I was going to say is uh, one of the things that he, yeah, he was talking about some of these, some of these issues and it kind of made me wonder if uh, to your point, as, as people get more human, it almost feels like social media feels pretty crap. Like there's a lot of stuff on the internet. That's not even very interesting anymore. And if it gets overrun with AI, like are people just going to start, sequestering into I think so I think I think we're going other to, new weird I think new niches the uh, value of I think that's already face to face yeah that, that has nothing to do with AI well sorry what I'm saying is if if AI continues to to kill like say uh YouTube tomorrow gets overrun and every second video is just like an AI video essay or whatever and you just can't sort through it all I could see people just sort of removing themselves entirely from social media maybe not entirely but like Going to places I, I, where I, they I, are getting I, curated. I, 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 I see, see where you're Patreon. going, but I, I don't think that the AI lends itself to flooding stuff with shit unless that shit is very popular, for which we're already in the same situation that we're in now. It's not like we look at the most popular videos on YouTube and we're like, brilliant! Like, we've, <laughs> well, we've cracked the code. It's all amazing. Uh, 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 our favorite stuff is niche content. We constantly drift. Pangea broke sometime around the late 90s and and we are all drifting further and further sure. away on these little content niche islands well a, a, a counter argument like i have never subscribed to a newspaper until two years ago and now i subscribe to like four because i just can no longer tolerate the algorithmically generated dog crap so it's like i got the wall street journal and i got the uh, new york times and i got and i got and i got uh i i uh, and to be honest, it's like, uh, especially after the pandemic, I'm, I am placing a bet on live events, on us actually being there in person. We did our thing at, uh, uh, what was the name of that cool joint, um, uh, where we did our, 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 uh, 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 the one public live show we did for Great Night this year. Oh, uh, uh Captain Quacks. Captain Quacks, right. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was next level because it was a real thing that right. definitely happened, yeah. and there was not a robot on the other side of it. <laughs> I, I think, I think that that is only going to get more valuable. I, I, yes, I, I, I do think that as we, the natural thing as we get further and further away from each other, the more exciting thing is going to be us coming back together. I do think that there is kind of a cyclical element of this that has kind of always happened, but. AI, I don't know. I still feel like AI is is a a boogeyman. Uh, it, it will be far more of a tool uh, for us. You know, like you know, there was that moment where CGI was a big panic in Hollywood, right? And it was like, oh my god, now it's getting so cheap, and Hollywood's going to want to replace everybody with digital actors, and actors aren't going to matter anymore. And then you had like a few little toes in that water. You had like like the the 
was it the the Final Fantasy movie or whatever that was like? Oh, uh, that that was Uncanny Valley. Uncanny uh, the Valley. Spirits shit. Within. We, yeah, and we yeah. still haven't seen that. We've seen better animated movies, but yeah. but we wouldn't look. We don't look at them and be like, "Fuck you! You're ruining human acting." We're just like, "Oh, that's a really good animated movie." And I think that there will be AI art. We will look at it as. Oh, it used AI to execute a human vision yeah. that connected with us. Well, I guess what I what I'm I'm not like overly worried about this, but I think there are already companies I've worked for in the past that uh, their business model relies mostly not around making the best possible content, but about um, being the best at SEO or yes. being the best at whatever. And so I could see AI in that way just. You know, you generate whatever article that answers whatever stupid, you know, uh, I finally explained Superman, like the yes. ending, and then uh, knows all the best practices of Google or Twitter or... Uh, but also at that point, it's just chum ads, right? Like, like chum ads are also really good. I do wonder whether or not that little girl from Jurassic Park died. Like, uh, uh, like that they are, they are, they are taking every element that we know on how to get somebody to click on something. And, and because it's mass produced, you throw it everywhere and and you hope to get X amount of conversion. Well, right. I'm just saying that I feel like at a certain point they might be able to reproduce those things so quickly and at such scale that Twitter would become for, for all intents and purposes, like you couldn't use a lot of these social media, like algorithmically based social media sites to actually find anything. I, 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 I agree with you. I do my, that, is my I, 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 thought. I, 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 the scale the way, of AI is something that can be a, a problem going forward, but ultimately it just drives and accelerates a thing that's already happening, which is all of us going to our own little islands. Well, that's all I was saying. Little, yeah. little right. David mm-hmm. Koresh's in our own little fucking cult world. Uh, wait, uh, two things. Which I'm thrilled about. Yeah, I really want to make a cult. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, two two things along the same line. Number one, um, uh, I, I, I would love to hear what you guys think the future is with uh, with Google, <laughs> the company based on ads saying that they intend to kill the cookie. <laughs> uh, but 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 uh, along the cookie line, I noticed that uh, I've, I've talked a lot on this and other programs about how I just don't like having my number got like, I don't like seeing an ad and knowing why I'm targeted for it. So it's like, whatever. So, uh, 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 Tabula has figured out that I am a married man in his late forties. So as a result, I'm reading an article about, well, the fed interest rates, something, something, and I scroll down. And then all of a sudden (laughs) it's just a giant fucking pair of tits in a low cut dress. And then, and then there's an arrow that points to the pendant and it says your daughter's name your son's name. So it's like, all right, so you got the fact that I'm a late 40s married man and and uh, you c- capture my attention by saying tits. And you're like, now think about your shame. Now think about how you're going to get out of this and feel like you did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a journey, man. That was a journey <laughs> through the I, I, mind I fucking Brian hate it. I hate I, 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 I have the picture. Uh, well, while you you're finding that, it. While, of course he did. While you're finding that, let's <laughs> remind everybody that patreon.com slash great night funds this show. You get a bonus episode each and every week. And uh, on the last episode of The Bones, Brian had just gotten back from the beekeeper. And so holy good. shit, did we just, Brian just explained the whole movie to me. So spoilers <laughs> for The Beekeeper, but uh, uh, we, we walked through all of it and it is hilarious and awesome. So please go ahead and check that out. Patreon.com slash And to be night. clear, that's all my channel is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so if you liked that. Yeah, if you like that, also. Please, yeah. uh, we will write you a reference to <laughs> Dr. Jordan Breeding on, on YouTube. Or all I do is I sit there and I'm like, okay, so then Jason like stabs this guy and then he walks <laughs> over here and he jumps through a window. <laughs> but for like three hours. <laughs> this yeah. is what I see on Wall Street Journal. It's just tits and it's an animated gif. So it's like just tits. And then it, and then it says, Arrow, your daughter Arrow, your son. Why uh, your son? I don't know. Because you're buying jewelry for them? Yeah, yeah. You're buying or jewelry your for wife. your wife. That's the Okay. The point oh, is, you're buying jewelry like, for your hey, wife. You're and- not bad for pressing pause on, or for noticing that. Oh, so just think tits. of your wife's tits. Now <laughs> yes. think of 
your children and getting your wife a nice thing because you s- thought of y- her tits exactly next to the jewelry with the children's name on. Yep, it. yep. Gotcha. What did you buy it? Uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you know what? My wife has three necklaces now. Hey, hey! <laughs> old three chain body. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna look like a fucking uh, a, a Dominican leadoff hitter with like three <laughs> chains on. It's like it's not my fault. There was an ad. <laughs> there was an ad. It kept coming back. The good the husband news just is, cares about our kids so much. <laughs> the good news is I've been thinking about your tits. Yeah. <laughs> and the Wall Street Journal knows that. Yes. <clears throat> uh, speaking of AI, have y- either of you guys listened to the AI George Carlin set? <gasps> I, I read about it. I did not listen to I it. I almost saw it. Do, do we want to give it? Uh, Just give it Give it a spin. Okay, because like, I, what are they going to come after us for copyright? Uh, it's another podcast. It, it, it's the Dude I don't Z even podcast think- that uh, I have not listened to it, but the way that I that I have heard, uh, uh, heard it, it is Will Sasso from Mad TV and another comic, and theoretically the third mic on the show is uh-huh. an AI, and, and I don't know if they're cagey about exactly... Who's operating the AI or whatever? Well, they claim it's uh it's an impression, so that legally yes. they can get away with it. So I I don't think there's anything copyrightable because if there was, yeah. the estate would trash. Now the, the also they have uh, crashed this it. is fair. This well, is sorry, fair they use. would do something legally. About yes, it. no. Yeah. The daughter <clears throat> the daughter has was very upset. George Carlin's daughter was very upset right. about it. Uh, but this is just trained on George Carlin's material, and then uh, the voice was was trained on him. Uh, look. All I'm going to say is this. Is it George Carlin? No. Is it methadone George Carlin? <laughs> yes. That, I mean, if you had a choice to say, would you like to hear a new George Carlin special? It's not his best. I mean, well, yeah. I, 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 uh, would I, you? I I clicked on it. I listened through to it for about 30 minutes of it. Uh, 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 14 years ago, uh, Patrick Delahanty and I started working on a similar idea of this. Is like when I'm dead, what? Just keep tweeting. Just find old tweets. Let me be a ghost walking around. Did you? Did you find the? Uh, uh, oh yeah, no, I've got it right now. Uh, uh, do Buy me a favor X. if you see the um, the the chapters. Yep. Go to reality television. The okay. reality television bit is like fucking. Good. I mean, like it's it's, it's very derivative. Like to be. Uh, oh, you know what? The chapters are welcome to reactions to my special. Uh, the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You probably section. do transcript. That's sometimes a way to. If oh on YouTube. yeah, is it, it? It's just it's just the one video. Yeah, it's. Well, I don't know. It's an hour long. Yeah. Okay. It it just go somewhere in the middle then. Okay. There we go. Let's 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 try this. Oh, first let me. Uh, <laughs> Rape my ads. They're terrible. What? Your ads? <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> you sure. need to buy a couple of pennies. Anybody. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Just do that, yeah. anyone. Hmm. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> How does it even know? Oh, wait. No, no, no. You're watching the episode where they're talking about it. Yeah, that's All what right. you told me to look for. No. Sorry. Okay. No, sorry. No, 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 no. They, they have, like, the full video where it's just the special. Okay, uh, I'm glad I'm dead. Full special. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so and, and see if you can look for. Uh, Hello, my name is Doozy. Yeah, yeah. See, see if you look for reality AI. television. Okay, got it. Got it. Reality special. TV. Here we go. All right. There we go. Methadone. Band George Cullen incoming. Fighting and crying and fucking and dying. Oh my God. The James Webb Telescope is sending back crystal clear images of light from stars that died billions of years ago. Stars that were formed in the crucible of creation. These are snapshots of the birth of the known universe. The moment existence itself was born. And nobody gives a shit. (laughs) Because a picture of space has no fighting, no crying, no fucking, no dying. If you want the American public to pay attention to something, it's got to have at least a little fighting, a little crying, a little fucking, or a little dying. In the last three years, the U.S. government said aliens are real. 
They said it in the New York Times for fuck's sake. They admitted they have, in their possession, crashed UFOs in hangars. They admitted that they're trying to reverse engineer non-human technology, which means they've been lying to the American public and the whole world for 80 years about knowing the answer to the biggest question in fucking human existence. Are we alone? They told you the answer. We're not, and no one cares because a grainy infrared video of a UFO ain't got no fighting, no crying, no fucking, and no dying. Oh my God! <laughs> you know what people care about instead? Who Taylor Swift is fucking? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you really care a lot about that. If she's spotted with anyone, anywhere, the first thing everyone seems to be thinking is, are they fucking? <laughs> it's global front page news. Everyone must know who Taylor Swift is fucking at all times. And we must all discuss it and have our opinions. You're at Starbucks. Would you like your Frappuccino, almond milk, pumpkin spice latte, iced or hot? Oh, and did you see who Taylor Swift is fucking? <laughs> You're at work. Great sales meeting today, everyone. But uh, before we break, could I just get a real quick show of hands? Who has seen who Taylor Swift is fucking? <laughs> You're at church. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> yes, my son, but have you seen who Taylor Swift is fucking? <laughs> And when you're not thinking about who Taylor Swift is fucking, you're thinking about who's dying. Politicians, musicians, actors, writers, anyone with any fame at all. It's a perpetual death watch waiting to post a favorite quote from the recently deceased or maybe a picture with them while they were alive or an anecdote about an interaction with them. <laughs> it's a touching personal tribute to a person you never fucking knew. <laughs> So please stop it. Can we keep that shit to friends and family? Zuck, if you're listening, this would be a great new feature for Instagram. Every user gets to set a list of approved people who can post about you after you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't on that list, you got to sit out of the performative grief competition this time. I bet that would cut the carbon footprint in half. You could single-handedly stop global warming. <laughs> And besides, we're all coming back now, so you should probably stop thinking of us as dead anyway. But back to the topic at hand. Fighting and crying and fucking and dying. Reality TV has it all, folks. Fighting and crying in every alive. episode. Uh, what, 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 what was this trained on? His specials, I think. Yeah. Just yeah. only his specials, I think. But that, And that's why it sounds derivative, because you know, George Carlin was famous for doing stuff like that where it's like like a uh, uh, catchphrase 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 example loop example, back example. On so it's like, and all like that it's stuff, very yeah. formulaic it, it does sound like a robot found what the the formula of george carlin was and then yeah. and then spit out something that was involved with modern uh uh topics but like i don't know man like i was listening to it on a plane and i'm like pretty fucking good <laughs> like it's it's not it's not terrible and there's a moment uh i think it's before that when when because it's a callback that, that we just played where he's like like we're all coming back all of us we're now we're now we're gonna we're gonna be the new news anchors we're the new blah 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 and it's like it in that authoritative george carlin it doesn't matter what your opinion is you now believe him because he's yeah. george carlin yeah, kind of way i guess so and, and i'm like like Damn, that's it really kind of makes you understand in a way that I think is uncomfortable that if AI can understand the patterns of humanity so fast, how much of our life is just patterns? Oh, I is, go, 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 go. is just that that thing over and over and over again and and how much of a pattern is professionalism and uh, uh, sarcasm and mm. uh, 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 all the little things that go into like George Carlin, a, a very singular voice. Cause that doesn't sound like a hack that is doing an impression of George Carlin. That sounds like George Carlin. The, the family wouldn't have been upset with it if it was bad. Right. They were upset with it because it was good enough that people were like, this is like George Carlin. And they're like, no, no, no. My dad would have done something different. And he probably would have, but he also might've done something worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's, and that's the, the, the end of the day. 
what we know is he'll be that good forever. Probably not his best, yeah. but it might not be something worse. And and you can't say that about comedians. You can't say that about any artist. It. Uh, I, I, well, I know that socially all of us tend to have root. There's a different subroutine that we run when we're picking our daughter up from school than when we're at a bar with a friend or at a sports event or whatever. Yeah. You know, it, it, we're it's shopping like, for pendants. Uh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> reading the New York Times, I swear to God. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. But yeah. As, as me far- too. I was reading the New York Times. <laughs> as far as as far as like, yeah, yes, the creepy part is the fact that a robot did it. But meanwhile, like, I, I think it was a decade ago that that we were celebrating. Somebody did a mashup of all of the once the Beatles broke up, all of their independent projects. They mashed them up and they created a, an album that pretended like the Beatles never broke up and came from an alternate reality. Um, where, uh, like, and it kind of sounds like a Beatles thing. Uh, here, it takes, a, I don't know, a couple minutes, uh, not a couple minutes, a few seconds to get into maybe a little bit longer than I thought. But you. Is this an AI thing or somebody? No, this is this, this 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 a part is from 12 years ago. And it's, again, to Justin's point, it's not actual Beatles, but. But it's methadone Beatles. So that's like uh, that's George Harrison's Fab with Band on the Run. Yeah, but it's like it's yeah. I mean, and this was very much of the era of like uh, the Gray Album, where they they mashed up the Beatles and Jay Z, or there was one uh, with like uh, Frank Sinatra and Biggie. Uh, uh, but but you know, that, this was that was that was a very aughts and tens thing to do these kind of very concepty mashup albums. So okay, all right. So say uh they f- they figure out I mean all the legal stuff is going to be weird trying to figure out what to do with Oh, these. and we got we got probably another 5 to 10 years where people are going to start really fighting about that. But say say George Carlin's family was behind making a new AI George Carlin special. Yeah. I mean, now, they can you, do it every behind, day. You mean they supported it, or you mean like at the end of the Scooby Doo episode, they pulled off the mask and it <laughs> they're like, "It wasn't even real." Yeah. We were making a grander point. <laughs> no, no, I just so like, or you know, so things that flood the market like that that are of a certain quality. Although I guess a big problem might be just how to monetize. But say that they yeah. they could. What is? Do you think that? So like like Brian's daughters, does that kill everything, or does that? Oh, I mean, it's going to cater to people that love that artist, yeah. And the fans of that artist are going to decide whether that that's worth it for them, whether or not it matters. And I think it's going to matter less and less for artists that are newer, because yeah. artists that are newer are going to utilize AI tools, and and mm. that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing for any artist that complains about AI, and I can understand where the insecurity comes from, but everybody's going to be using these things yeah. like these things are, are are their their photoshop in a lot of ways like like in in a way that you weren't able to do something before now you can do it and you can do it cheaper and easier than you ever had before ai is just that just think of it like that and you have a good understanding of of, of where we're going but uh i don't th- that ai george carlin special another bit that's in there is him saying like like there's going to be people that it's better for AI. And I'll tell you one. Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I read about that. And it's like, he's fucking right. It's AI George Carlin. He's like, God damn it. Like, give the man more hats to you. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, 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 it's, I, 
<laughs> we're all going to make a decision on what we like and what we don't like, and the 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 people will decide. I agree with Brian that the one thing we are finding as we make these things is that people care. People are legitimately weirded out by how fast and smart the tech is. And so that turns them off in a way that other technology didn't per se. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's viewed as cheating, but if you are able to timing wise, do something for somebody that has a very human flair to it, faster and with better quality than you would have been able to do otherwise, then it's worth it. Like uh, we, we did an episode uh, uh, two weeks ago about this site, Suno.ai, uh, which oh, just gee. makes one minute song. It's like Dali. Oh yeah. But it makes a one minute song. Okay. And you can tell it to use certain lyrics and people's names. Yeah. And, and so you can just write like right now on your phone, you could, in the style of your wife's favorite artist, right. write a song and say, say, uh, 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 you know, some inside joke with your wife, with your wife's name in it. Ten seconds later, boom, done. Share it via text. Yeah. And and that's fun because they're inside jokes, right. not because it's AI. It's made because it's AI. It's good because it's AI. better than an inside joke would be otherwise. Right. The fidelity is not fantastic, but me and my wife had an inside joke. And there was one song that we've been passing back and forth to each other for a week now because it was a really funny inside joke that was facilitated by this technology. And I think it's interesting, though. It's like it, it, it does feel like AI is getting a lot of benefit from like the novelty of it. Yeah. Like you're not going to spend a bunch of money over time to make weird little original like a paramore riff song maybe you would i don't know brian brian's already spent 80 dollars on this website alone so oh wow okay well <laughs> well, well I mean, but I mean, even I mean, that but, feels but like... i did i did i did come up with a couple of bangers i mean it uh yeah well i mean here i'll play did you hear the favorites. songs jordan yeah. no i did not hear you the didn't song. hear the song Listen up, I got something to say. you watch the movies all day is getting in the way of your life your relationships and all that you're having the movie marathon it's time to stop that yo they're torturing us, subjecting us to your obsession With every movie genre, it's a never-ending session We can't keep up, it's like a never-ending loop You're breeding watches like rabbits, man, it's gotta cool Stop watching the really little bunch of movies, joy You're torturing us all, it's time to stop, son Stop, step away from the screen, go live your life Quit the movie marathon, let go on that strike Stop watching the really little bunch of movies, joy So, okay, yes And what was that prompt? Jordan Breeding watches. Uh, Jordan Breeding watches watching. too much movies. Stop watching really long bunch of movies. You're torturing us. Hardcore rap. Uh, let me do this. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna throw in. Uh, also, surprise twist. <laughs> You're an alien. So, well, let's listen. <laughs> but, no, whatever. Keep, talk, keep talking because it's going to take a second. Okay. Jenner. What I was going to say is like, so it's interesting. It couldn't generate that. Um, uh, so I do write original joke songs yeah. for our videos. And it is interesting. It's kind of like, I could do this, but would anybody. So, for example, I, I, I've had multiple people sign up just so that they could download. We wrote um, a song called Caleb is Dead because yeah. my camera guy moved to Austin. Okay. And so we I made a joke song about how he was dead. Yeah, he's dead. And yeah. now we just use that clip all the time. Anytime somebody dies, it's like, oh. Uh, um, and people are like, who the hell is Caleb? Like every character that dies is Caleb. Yeah. Um, but it's only interesting to people because it's like original and we wrote it. I feel like if it was just. But this isn't for that. Right. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying is I'm I'm sort of struggling to understand. So like, like, uh, what should I be afraid of? Because it's like G George Carlin is the people that would buy that are not the people supporting me on Patreon, probably. No. Or right. it would not no. interfere no. realistically. I, 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 guys, I think we could go to the documentary film Movie Man from Outer Space. Jordan Breeden is up on the head, sitting in the theater watching movies all so grand. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's like the technology is what's interesting, not necessarily actually what it's making. And like in this instance, like what's funny is the jokes and stuff. But like, ooh. like you're selling oh, an inside joke. Man, sitting in the theater. Song in this instance. In this instance. In this instance. In this instance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, uh, no, I, 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 I think that we are seeing a fundamental shift of creativity. Yeah. I, I do think that there is part of the advantage that you have as a musician that will on some level not be this eroding, yes. but, but, Shit. but there will be a, a, a cheaper way in the moment. Yeah. If like, if what you need is a joke that punches like, Spend thirty minutes fucking around with that, and all of a I'm literally you've got writing enough that does a thing. The joke of this, so I just watched all the leprechauns, and the joke of it is going to be that I'm playing a terrible bar gig until I watch them all, and then at the end I was going to play like an original big song that sort of sums up all the leprechaun movies. Gotcha. To your point, I could just throw that in there, redo it myself, and nobody would even know. I mean. I think th that's the other thing about you know a, a lot of the the art. I stuff, won't though, that, patrons. But I do think that like. For me, I know that Dali is very helpful even if I wanted to work with a professional like graphic designer. The mm -hmm. things that I've always struggled with whenever I've tried to hire professionals is that I don't know what I want mm. and I don't trust their taste about what I want. And so there's this moment of like, well, how do I how do I bridge that gap? Yeah. If I can Dali a few ideas and be like, oh, I think I like kind of something like this now i'm not pointing to a derivative of something else and i'm asking them to rip sure. it off i'm not giving them a bunch of word salad of like i want it to look kind of like a jet but also a fire and also a laser like that's actually a great point so my dad is a graphic designer that's what yeah. he's been his whole career he makes stamps and stuff for the postal service and um i on a on a lark wrote a kid's book yeah i was like you do you want to help me illustrate this and he suggested, so Adobe just uh, launched Firefly or whatever, yeah. which is kind of like their Dolly equivalent. Yeah. You type in a phrase. And he was like, why don't you just like type a bunch of stuff about robots, because it was about a robot in there, and just until you see something you like, and then we can use that as a starting point. Yeah. Your point. So it's like, you can do all of the, rather than me having to sit down and draw a whole ass robot, yes. and me be like, I don't like any part of that. And you're like, cool. And I will draw right, another, another robot. Another robot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I get that. I, that actually makes a lot of sense. I, I do think that we are seeing a fundamental reshift of creativity. That that creativity mm -hmm. we are we are we are bridging some element of it. Yeah. I don't think that aside from right now a cheap pop for like Suno, like that that replaces what you're looking to do. Well, which sure. is which is like a fully integrated from the same head that is doing this entire video. Yeah. yeah. Now here's my Bohemian Rhapsody of right. all of the Leprechaun movies. That is that's a fully integrated idea. It's always going to make more sense than trying to type in like summarize all the Leprechaun movies <laughs> yeah. in a bar thing. Right, Although yeah. Brian, try that one out. Yeah, uh, actually, I was be have you did you try that? Yeah, with a little green creature, just three feet tall. He wore a top hat and had a mischievous grin. A leprechaun's tail let the adventure unfold. Oh, there, leprechaun, a whimsical sprite from the movies that gave us a fright from the hood to the space. Oh, what a delight, leprechaun! Honestly, yeah, not terrible. Oh, what a wild. In the land of our green land, where jokes dwell, there's a tale that's been told. I must now retell, tell, tell. Mischievous creatures and possible. It's the definition of folk ballad feels stretched. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 hold on. I think actually I played the wrong one. This yeah. one looks pretty good. The land of magic and lore, there lived a lad named Jordan. Jordan. With fiery hair and a echoes. heart so, so bold, his spirit never burdened him. He said, on a quest to vanquish all the leprechauns true. From the first to the last he watched them all Till, till the, the break, break of dawn God. No <laughs> great joy then A hero so strong So strong He watched the leprechaun <laughs> movies all night long From the hood to space <laughs> He never backed down Brave Jordan the talk of the of the town. Of the what? <laughs> uh, well, shoot. I will say that <laughs> Suno, 
<laughs> Zuno does have a thing where they like to say talk of the town. <laughs> talk of the town is somewhere in there because there was another one of the ones that my wife and I have been sending back and forth to each other. Is yeah. uh, it, it, it relies on talk of the town. <laughs> My, uh, my melody's better, but yeah, that's tough. No, but now you can do like mm. do like thirty minute credits at the end, like a movie, and just oh. now you can string 50, forty different, yeah, yeah, yeah forty different Leprechaun <laughs> songs at, at the end, and you don't have to write forty different Leprechaun songs. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that it kills art. I do think that it it brings a whole lot of people Tell into I'm the mix sorry. that uh, wouldn't otherwise be in there. And we're going to see ugly parts of that. And we're going to see really, really cool and fun parts of that. Because now what's it, what it's tapping into is the idea of like, oh, can you select the best? Because mm. when you're creating something by definition, you're never going to be the best person to decide, is this the best version of what I could do? Right. You know, that's what a, a value of a good producer would do is like, now push that, take that part, dump that part. It's hard to do it when you're the creator. Yeah. But if you are just the producer and the robot is making the raw stuff and you're and you don't have to worry about ego or yeah getting tired now all of a sudden i do think you are going to create cool stuff and i think like that george carlin bit they've been cagey about exactly how that came up and they sort of present it like oh we just typed in george carlin bit mm. and and then it came out i in no way believe that's true i think yeah. that it was pieced together uh from various different things but they probably worked on far more than they want to uh, uh, let on but it's hard to imagine cranking out an entire hour worth of content that's reasonably good just from a prompt or like yeah. feeding it stuff. I think they probably got a shit ton of them yeah. and they found the best. They they yeah. produced the best and then called it into an hour. Yeah. And it probably took a long time, but it it doesn't make it less worth it because it it's used Schindler's AI. list. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, we're, 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 we've lost Brian to the Suno hole. Uh, <laughs> no, I, all, all, I, all he wants to do. I mean, do immediately I'm thinking, based on what you were even talking about, I was like, it's interesting because um, uh, Christopher Nolan's next movie, somebody's going to have to storyboard it. Yes. He could just do it by himself and not literally. Well, and and, and uh, uh, that's but the metaphor that I try to. Uh, you've worked in a writer's room, you have had uh, other people try to. Uh, make your vision a reality. Uh, uh, many people have never experienced that. And it's right. like, uh, uh, it's it's just a writer's room. And it's just somebody fresh out of college who knows less than you about what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, however, it is much more patient. And it doesn't mind it when you shout at it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. No, right, right now, it's well-intentioned, very hardworking, dumb interns. Hmm. That's That's what it is now. And if you could think of things that could be worthwhile if you had a up all night army of well intentioned but not particularly bright interns, which I think everybody could, yeah, then there is use for you in the world right now. But uh beyond the art the the the, the copyright element of it of where on the line of training versus you know production yeah. or uh, theft. Uh, uh, where yeah, where does that exist? I think that's something that we're we are going to have to figure out, but uh, the tools themselves, look, they're, they're going to be best utilized by artists. Yeah. Like, they're not going to be best utilized by people who are just learning the tenets of what makes a good song or what makes a good picture. Well, it's a good, I mean, it's, it is interesting, right? Because it's like the thing that you always see on Twitter is inevitably some tech guy who's like, look, I made like a, a, a poster of a superhero with massive tits yes. that might sell pendants. And and everyone's like, no, you're replacing the comic. <laughs> like artists who <laughs> normally draw superheroes with huge tits, um, and th they they look bad. And that to your point, that probably is more them than it is yeah. the tool. Exactly in the yeah. same way that like handing them a brush would also result in something mediocre. In something shitty. Yeah. yeah. So it's like now they they got another machine that they can but be shitty they, with. Yeah, yeah, but they it looks like shit, and they're like, great. Let me throw this out into the world. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's trash. I mean, I, I, yeah. I guess AI is the new Comic Sans is what it boils down to. Like, everyone will love it until they realize it's I think a it, I, th I, I think it's the new Papyrus, and yep. we're eventually going to get an Avatar. Yep. I agree. I wrote a song about it. It's about my wife.
sucked. It didn't. You didn't write a song about it. You just want to play another song that you were that you used. No, actually, I did write this one because you can customize the lyrics and make it curse. Bonnie brush with snakes, play rocks on the mic. Everything she ever does is fucking hot and tight. Protecting the kids while dogs out of control. Bonnie takes a shit in stride. She's on the fucking roll. So well, I, I thought it was that. takes a shit in stride, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, if that's that's confident, yeah, <laughs> I don't even need to stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like a like a Clydesdale at Bush Gardens. Yeah, right? I'm just fucking, I'm just making my way, <laughs> dropping it and moving, baby. That is hot and tight. <laughs> hot and tight. Everything she does <laughs> is fucking hot and tight. All right, Jordan, real quick, where can people see more of your stuff? Oh yeah, uh, if you. D- YouTube search Dr. Jordan breeding. You'll find a lot of different things. If it's at cracked, I don't benefit. But if you go to my, <laughs> if you go to my actual, uh, if you go to Modern Rogue, I have benefited yeah. from that at some point. So watch those or anywhere else. Uh, but I also have a specific channel, Dr. Jordan breeding. And then, you know, you can just, there I'm we on. go. Well, what are, what are some of the, the, the ones that are good for newbies on, on your channel? <laughs> well, it depends on, it depends on, what kind of movie series you like. Every freaking series is just like, turn it on, let it run in the background. Yeah. Your life will be better. Yeah, so I would say, he yeah, just... He explains every freaking movie in the MCU phase one, yeah. two, and three. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, they're, they're sort of sensory overload if you just sit down and watch them, but if, you, if you're if you worried about that, you can just listen to them too. And I don't know, I, I enjoy them. What the hell? No, why are you ashamed? You're, go see. It, it, it's a great channel. Uh, uh, Jordan is phenomenal. And uh, please go ahead and support him. Uh, Brian, what do we learn? Uh, we learned that Dr. Jordan Breeding is far too humble and needs to take more credit. I don't know. He should assert a title that he didn't actually go to law school for. <laughs> Doctors. What doctor? Are there. I guess they're. See you next Tuesday. Doctor. Dr. Esquire. See you next okay. Tuesday, uh, uh, Dr. Love you guys. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Have a great night. It's been a great night. What's our fucking tagline? It's still great. Hey, man. I love it. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. Diamond Club hopes you enjoyed this production. Hee hee hee.